All right, guys, we got Cayman here. He got top eight playing the Sword Soul deck. We also got Sean here from Quezio. Link's going to be in the description. Make sure you check him out. All right, bro, how'd you do today? Uh, I did pretty good. I ended up going 6-1. Uh, My only loss was to you, actually, in game three. It was pretty close. It was a good game. Yeah, it was a good game. Uh, I can't deny it. Um, so we'll go ahead and get into it. Oh, my God. Upon first glance, it almost looks like this Sword Soul deck is a uh, format behind where we are now. Um, I did have access to like the Needle Fiber combo package um, and the, the Brave Token, the Venture Token stuff. Um, I decided not to play it. Um, Sword Soul is already really powerful as it is. It has access to a lot of extension and Baxi is just one of the most ridiculous cards in the world. Um, my biggest thing is I wanted to be able to deal with what's in the meta now. And my biggest goal for the day was to not get side blocked. And I did not a single time. I stopped it every single time. Let's go. Yep. Um, so to start it off, we got the Sword Soul cards. Triple Moe, Double Taiyi. Uh, we got triple long one. I ended up only playing double Ecclesia. Um, you'll notice some weird ratios in the deck for sure. One of my biggest things was wanting to make sure that we always have live cards. This deck already has ridiculous consistency, especially with the spell cards between the tinny spell cards and the emergence. Um, we just want playable cards. Uh, Two seem perfectly fine with me. I think there was one time that I didn't open a normal summon or an easy way to get to it where I had to like special summon a tinny and use circle to get to it. Um, you know what's so crazy? Um, so I was talking about the deck I was running so and so, and I was talking about Freeman, like I wanted to run two Ecclesia because I was running two Ecclesia uh, recently. And when the 3v3 happened last week, I ended up deciding to just using three just because like I guess I want to say it but two is just working fine but I can see why you run two in your version yeah it's and and you'll see especially with some of the spell cards I kind of did something similar it's the, the biggest goal was just to have live cards we want live cards and cards that have a lot of utility uh so that's the sorts of monsters uh for the tinnies Chipolatera, Chipolashuna. Um, I said, I'm not playing Needle Fiber or the Rose Dragon package, so I only run the two of a Shuna. Um, going first is just the body, it doesn't really do anything. Um, and when you're going second, you have plenty of access to it. And I am still running the Shathana. I am running the Circle, and this card came in clutch a lot. Um, that card got it, me today. <laughs> it, it comes in clutch whenever they try to, like, Ogre the Moe, and I just tribute it off and get this on board and just keep playing. Um, sure me. <laughs> it also has a lot of utility with the Link monsters, and you'll see that a little bit when we go to the extra deck. Um, I feel really comfortable with the ratios. You have access to it. I get the Shooter when I need it. Um, well, I said going first just doesn't do anything. It's just a body. When you're playing pure sword soul, just a body doesn't really get you anywhere. Um, so that's it for that. That's the that's the whole monster lineup as far as the tinny sword soul stuff goes. Um, the two one ofs, blackout and sacred summit. Um, I know especially in the needle fiber build, people really aren't running this card too much anymore. MVP. This, I think this card is fire. Th this card is absolutely ridiculous. I can't tell you how many times it was basically a double summon. When I long one discard, di discard Taiyi, not normal summon Moe, and they're just like, I, it doesn't matter which one you stop. I'm just going to keep playing. And obviously, Blackout, I mean, it's just a crazy card. Yeah, I really I mean, like Summit. Uh, as you can see, guys, um, when we get to my list, I've got the social list. You can see I win this card. This card is literally insane. They actually got me, got me a game. And it's really good playing on the Lancia. You got Moya and Gray. So that's a really another thing. It makes a big difference. And it actually helped me win in time. Um, I got Otter on board and I activated Long One against a virtual world player and they had to trap up, try to pop it, but they watched me search this with She Shao. So no matter what they pop, I have Otter, Tuner, Long One. Doesn't matter what they pop, the Long One's coming back and I burned them in, in time. So that's actually how I won one of my matches. Uh, we have Triple Emergence. Um, I know I said I'm going for live cards. Emergence is one of those cards you don't... Oh, seeing two of these isn't always the worst. Uh, I saw it twice a couple times today, and I didn't mind. I just discard off a long one. It's not the best discard, but it's more than functional, and it is just the best searcher in the deck. Um, so, again, I know I'm kind of on some weird ratios. We got Double Circle uh, and Double Cycle. Um, 
I like both the cards. Both the cards have a lot of utility in their own ways. This obviously makes the Chow Fang play just free, basically. This really helps to dodge the Imperm, but uh, I got really tired of seeing two of this card. Do you it's, think you will run uh, the third circle after today, or you think you still run two? Um, I ran three and three for the longest. Uh, and two is fine. You see it when you want to, and seeing multiple of it is kind of rough. It, it, it can have utility, and it can get you the advantage you need when you set one, and you can, you know, Activate Blackout, Chain Heavenly Dragon Circle, get rid of your target. It's not the worst, but the decks are already extremely consistent, and I want live cards. I, I don't want multiples in my hand. Uh, for me, it worked perfectly, honestly. Uh, so now we're going to go into the non-engine cards. Um, triple Droplets, Triple Chalice, and Triple Impro. I decided to go with this, and there's a good reason that I didn't get signed a single time today. Um, droplets with either of these cards is just insane. Uh, when your opponent, you know, when you're going into that normal board of Herald of Arclight, Baronet de Floor, and the side, uh, like a DPE, this with any of these plus any other, like a monster discard, shuts down an entire board, and it's just insane. Um, it, it came in clutch. It came in clutch super hard. Uh, and another thing with these cards, I'm trying to go for utility. Um, these cards are very functional going first or second. There are some matchups that's not the best in, Prank Kids being cheap among them, um, which is a very powerful deck, you have to respect it. But I do have, uh, it's, it's not the best against Prank Kids, but against almost every other matchup and with how popular like the base, scythe, lock, all that kind of stuff is, I do not regret playing this at all. Worst case scenario, Bates out of Griffin against Prank Kid. Exactly. Uh, we have the two talents. <laughs> you got me with that card today. <laughs> got you with the two talents. Uh, when you, you get the activation, we're still... Uh, I can imagine we're playing two now. <laughs> yeah, we got the second one. Uh, same idea with running two ofs. You usually don't want to see multiple of it. It came in clutch against him earlier because he negated the activation with the Baron and I had the second one in hand. Um, this, functionally, is just the third copy of Call by the Grave. Um, the deck is consistent, and a lot of times it can push through plays, but like any deck, sometimes you open up those hands where you have one play and one play alone. Um, but again, it's a good utility card. Going second, it helps crack boards hard and it puts on a lot of pressure. Yeah, I've, I, I've gone back and forth on this before, but sometimes the deck just needs the protection. And again, as far as utility goes, if you if you don't need it, then it's just another interruption when your opponent takes their turn after you go first. So, uh, no complaints. No complaints. Uh, the last two cards, one Ash, one Cosmic. Um, this is actually just still in the main deck because I didn't have room in the side deck. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, and we have the one Ash Blossom. Um, it's mostly there when you set the Chow Fang play and you go for the Blackout. So that way you get to search when they threaten the Chow Fang and they're going to out it anyways. Um, and then if you draw it, I mean, it's still Ash Blossom. It's a solid card. It always is. I noticed with your build, uh, only, you only ran Ash as one of your hand traps. I, as, as you notice, I actually was not running any hand traps. Right. Yep. So, wow. Uh, how are you feel not running any hand traps? Oh. Uh, Honestly, it did not bother me at all because so often I would open multiple of these cards uh, or multi one of these along with the talents, and that deals with a lot of stuff. Uh, like I said, I didn't get side block a single time, so I answered the boards. I can't say if it's 100% right, but it worked out for me pretty well, and it's been working out for me for a while. I just. Your deck's good against breaking boards, and you just wanted to maximize on that. I want to break boards, and one of the biggest things, too, and a lot of people don't expect this out of Sword Soul, when you make Shisha Baron, no one flinches because that's not hard to break. When you make Shisha Baron and you set three back row, everyone, their, their jaw kind of drops because they're just not ready to deal with that. Because, I mean, it's a Sword Soul build. Most people are expecting the, uh, it was almost like a medical for me, I guess, because so many people are expecting the needle fiber combo build, and they're not, they don't put in all their spell and trapping moves. But so many times today, I would just make two monsters with a disruption and set three or four back row and my opponent couldn't deal with the back row. That's how I clutched a lot of my games. Um, go ahead and go into the extra deck. We got the triple monk. Uh, you you got to play three. I've tried playing two before but that really cripples your turn two plays a lot and your turn three plays. The game starts to turn into a slog. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times when the game turns into a slog, when you run out of these and you can't continue your Tinny cycle, like your Tinny loop with the Ashina and the Adara, the game's over. Uh, the one Shaman, uh, I mean, I don't know what to say about it, it's Shaman. It, 
it gets you there when you need it and it has some really interesting utility along with uh baxia because you can still activate the effects monster special summon from the graveyard so if you bring back a yazi or a baxia you can still use their uh the backseat to summon back and the Yazi to pop, which actually came up today. I brought the backseat back and summoned a Moe from Grave to go into a Draco Berserker. Uh, I also run the one Berserker of the Tinny. Uh, I know most people don't play this card. Uh, with Shathana especially, it comes in clutch a lot. And one thing that I've come to realize when people try to interrupt this deck, um, even if they can't stop your place completely, they'll try to leave you with an awkward set of monsters that you can't normally do anything with. You know, when they leave you with just like an Adara and, uh, I don't know, a, a Moi and then like a Vashudan field or something, when, uh, you normally can't do anything with those cards. I mean, I guess with Vashuda and Adara, you could make a level 8 synchro. Um, it's a little, 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 little spice card. I see. It, you can link into this and then you have a big monster and you can just keep doing your tenure. You, you can just keep going. And it also has, like I said, the Shathana utility is really nice. There's a lot of monsters that hit that 3k threshold and they can't stop it a lot of times because it's just a non-effect monster. So when you summon it and you go, I did it against a DDD player, you go crash into their 3, 3k monster, they both die, and then you Shathana bring them back and you get to poke for 3k. Oh, it's, yeah. it's pretty good. It, it's, it's pretty it good. Came, <laughs> it, it, it came in clutch. I've tried cutting it a few times, but I end up regretting it almost every time. Uh, we got the Tushi Shell. Um, similar thing, I've tried cutting it down before. You just need the two to be able to keep playing once you can burn through the first one. Um, but in both the level 10s, I actually didn't summon this today. Um, but in theory, it is extremely good against the adventure token stuff. It's just a lot of the time, I would still rather just make the Baron because I end up with so much back row set, I just need to protect it. I can't get hit by Lightning Storm or Hockey's Feather Duster if they do have it. I got to protect all my back row. Um, we got the one Berserker, pretty standard. Uh, the one Yazi, double Baxia because Baxia is just insane. <laughs> When you can go Baxia into Baxia, like when you make the first Baxia with Taiyi, dump Moe, Baxia will bring back the, the Moe and the Moe into a second Baxia and you spend three cards and then it puts 46 damage on board. It's just kind of wild. Um, one Chow thing protects you from the Beer Gamma, Valor. Comes in a lot and if they have it, it'll force it out. And then of course the one Baron. I mean, it's it's Baron. You can't complain with the uh, Omni the Gate that's easy to get to. Yeah, we'll get to the side deck real quick. All right, so we have spell trap removal, double cosmic, harpies, feather duster, and the red reboot. Like I said, I have the third in the main deck. The main deck was 42, actually. Um, I just wanted the third. I knew if I was going to come up against a back row deck, I was going to need it, but I enjoyed everything else that I was already playing uh, in the side deck, and I really didn't want to do anything else with it. Um, I'm still playing the, the triple dark ruler. Um, I find that against a lot of rogue decks or m any deck that's on a back row deck or just your generic DPE scythe lock deck, it just triples them. I mean, it's super strong against Dragon Link. It's super strong against DDDs. Um, it's really just for rogue decks. I actually didn't use it today. Um, didn't come up, so I'm not too sure about that, honestly. Um, the stuff for going first, and I've been playing this card for a long time, and no one ever sees it coming. Different Dimension Ground. Um, it turns boards that look subpar into what uh, it doesn't matter, your opponent's not playing. I can make She Shall Baron A, and against most decks, any decks I bother putting this in against, I flip this, it doesn't matter how weak my board is. You're probably not playing that turn, and you're probably not killing me. And I'm, I'm so always... glad I beat you before you activated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless you beat me before I activate it, you'll get me there. And we have the double anti-spell fragrance for the same... Um, same concept, these are just extremely powerful turn-ending cards depending on the deck, and you put these in for going first. Uh, the goal of this deck always going first is, is not to stop your opponent from doing anything, it's to stop your opponent from establishing a board, because you always try to set up a turn two play where you have a Taiyi and an Ashina in hand. Because that's enough, if you stop your opponent from fully comboing off, you're going to break whatever they establish and just go for the OTK. Which is was kind of my goal with this deck, and that's what I ended up doing a lot. Um, and then we have the Triple D Crow. Uh, I, uh, I was playing Lancia, but I found that it ended up conflicting quite often with what I was trying to do, especially when you end up making the uh, it shuts down, it shuts down your Shishao negate, and I mean, obviously so you usually want to try to shotgun Lancey as soon as you can so they can't water enchanters from the hand. But when it conflicts with one of the monsters that I summon every single turn, it just it kind of felt hard to justify, honestly. But the, I like the DD Crow. Um, I did side it in a couple times. It hits what you need to, and it's really good just to replace 
uh, you know, the Imperms or the Chalices. Whatever decks that those don't hit, DD Crow usually hits really hard. So it's, uh, I guess PK is a good example. Yes, Imperm, Chalice, Forbidden Droplets is functional against them, but it's not always the best option. A lot of times they're just using effects in hand in the graveyard, and having Crow to swap out for those is just really nice. And again, it just has a lot of utility. Um, against those Scythe decks, I, you know, I take out the talents and I put in the Crows, and I just have even more outs to it. So a lot of times, going into games two and three, I have 12 outs to Scythe in my deck. You, you are not sizing me. We're, we're getting to it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give a shout out to my boy Chandler. Let me borrow those droplets. <laughs> they're, they're expensive. <laughs> um, a shout out to my buddy Sean. Also, they borrow a couple cards and drove us up here. All right, it's good coming out. Like y'all like the video, guys. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Also, follow Goo Gaming. Uh, it will be in the description below. So, so like this video, Sweet. subscribe, smash the like button. Y'all gonna see more top eight videos.